The Office of the Parliament in its continued television series on parliamentary personalities highlights Mrs. Elmina Clark Allen, the senator, parliamentary representative, and politician. Parliamentarian Elmina Clark Allen served in the first and second Republican Parliament for the periods September 1976 to September 1981, and in November 1981 to November 1986. Mrs. Elmina Clark Allen served in the Parliament as both a senator and as a parliamentary representative for the Toko Manzanilla constituency. She was a member of the People's National Movement and was part of its government in the position of parliamentary secretary in two ministries, the Ministry of Labor, Social Security and Cooperatives, and the Ministry of Education and Culture. Due to her outstanding performance as a parliamentary secretary, she was promoted to a minister in the Ministry of Housing and Resettlement. How did Mrs. Elmina Clark Allen perform in both the Senate and the House of Representatives? Um, well, of course, she entered Parliament first in 1976 as a senator. And, but she built such a, a, a strong rapport with the community. She was such an integral part in the community that, of course, in 81, she was selected to be the member of Parliament, actually contested the seat. What I would say about her style of representation was that she was extremely accessible. I mean, she, unlike many parliamentarians, today she lived in the community. Um, a house on, I, I can see it now on Bravo Hill and it was open 24-7. You had a problem, you could go to Auntie Mina concerning it. She had a word of advice or someone that she can refer you to who could provide that assistance. In the Senate, you are more or less at large, where you are a represent, you are selected by your party to represent its interests in the Senate and so that she would have served any and everyone from that position in the Senate. Um, she would have made interventions from time to time, and, but at that time she would have been a parliamentary secretary, not, um, not a minister, and therefore her interventions would not be as, as, as regular as it would have been the case after she became, after she became a minister. When she became a parliamentary representative, a member of the lower house, the House of Representatives, she then had um, specific responsibility for a constituency. And if it is one thing that marked out Mrs. Elmina Clark Allen was that she was always and remained ever faithful to that being a community person. Before she actually got into politics, she was a community person. After she got into politics, she never lost that. Why do you think she made the switch from senator to parliamentary representative? In those days, I, I think Dr. William was trying to uh, bring more and more women into the, into the political free. Um, quite a few of us at that time it was Elmina, it was Muriel Donovan of Davidson, myself, who was brought into the Senate to serve um, the, 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 the thought, as, as I expect, be, behind it was to bring more of the professional and semi-professional women into politics, uh, expand the reach of the party, expand the reach of the country. Women at that time were, were starting to, to come into their own generally in the, in the um, national community. To run a government you need a variety of skills and it would be good if the individual has all of the skill sets in his own or her own personality. You have in government you have to negotiate with the internal situation, you have to negotiate externally. You need a certain intellectual capacity to deal with those. The person who has that may or may not have the people's person touch. But if you don't have it, you need to have in the government people who have that people's person touch. She was one of those who helped in that very important area. Even though she was a minister, she was always there in St. Andrew. If you go to the St. Andrew, community complex, you would see a plaque 
put up in her honor because she did a lot of work with the women in St. Andrew while working with women all around the country, Girl Guides Association and other organizations. Of course, she was a member of the People's National Movement, so she worked with the women there. You know, so generally she was all around. What kind of discipline is needed to make the transition from senator to parliamentary representative? Humility. Um, and I, I think that is so important because nowadays you hear representative, the people can get to them. I mean, you, you have what, is it the, the Prado generation and others who. But she was so humble as to be totally accessible to the people. And um, I think that, that really was the, the hallmark. So whatever she did in terms of infrastructure and development and, and references and whatnot, what stood out was her, her humility as a, as a person. The fact that she took that calling um, extremely seriously. Commitment to people. Because she knew so many people and she was concerned about people, she would make sure that they're not left behind, which is, is a problem that you tend to have. Eh? Um, people doing development and they sit at a table and they come up with a bright idea, but they forget the little people, the, the, the ground, the grassroots, who must benefit. And what she was bringing, even in her discussions, was a grassroots um, appreciation and concern for what you were doing. So you, you didn't lose touch with the grassroots. When you are in the Senate, you are at large, you are a member of the PNM in her case. So, and PNM at that time was in the, was in the government, was, was the government, so she was a member of the ruling party in the Senate. She had no particular constituency, but being a community, a community person, in the sort of eastern half of the, of, of the island. She tended to be accessible and to serve people in those areas. When she got into the, into, the, into the lower house where she had an identifiable constituency, there it was much more direct, much more specific, and she did it selflessly. Some of her outstanding contributions in both the Senate and the House included the Law Reform Miscellaneous Provisions Bill relating to family law, compensation for injuries and other matters. The Kiwanis Club Port of Spain Incorporation Bill. The Constitution Prescribed Matters Bill. Contract Work. Corruption Criminal Charges. The St. John Ambulance. Appropriation Bills. The Cooperative Citrus Growers Association Bill. The Housing Bill. And Building Lots Allocation in Trinidad and Tobago. But she was very much instrumental, as I said, in, in, in housing throughout our area. I remember various housing developments that she uh, would have piloted in conjunction with the government of the day, of course, in areas like the self-help in, in, in North Sangre Grande and other areas that really had bore her hallmark in Valencia. Um, a lot of these housing areas would, would came to fruition during her time as a member of parliament, as a representative of the people of Toko Mansdala. It's one thing to speak to something you don't believe in. It's a totally different thing to reflect your own convictions when you speak on issues. It would, they would have come in the social sector. Her budget contributions tended to reflect her concerns in these areas. As a concerned politician, Mrs. Elmina Clark Allen bonded with the Federation of Women's Groups Girl Guides, PNM Women's Group, Village Councils, and a Common Man and Woman. Um, she was very integral in the Girl Guides um, in Toko Sangri Grandi, in Toko Manzilla. Um, she was also a business person because she formulated something called the Buyers Club, where she encouraged entrepreneurship, particularly among the women in the community. She assisted people generally, the by local by local program, getting people to buy foodstuffs and sell, you know, be able to help themselves so that if they buy the foodstuffs wholesale, then the women will come together at some center or so and work it out that people can afford to buy food at a cheaper rate. And um, as, even after she left um, politics, 
her influence um, was extremely important in the, in, in, in the constituency and in the region because she was so in touch with the different communities and the people that, that their view represented her view. She was a guider to start with and she eventually became the guide commissioner, the national commissioner for guides, the Girl Guides Association. They still speak very highly of, of her um, and her involvement in the movement. Uh, Elmina had operated in the coterie of social workers and the Federation of Women's Institutes. Um, so she was on the ground um, with, the, with the large majority of women doing work. And at one time she was chairman of the National Commission for Women. There was a social cultural group in Sandy Grandi and they did a lot of work with young people, you know, and drama, cooking, you know, generally trying to improve the quality of life for young people. From her perspective, she considered all the young people in the, in the region to be her, her nieces, nephews. I don't think she had biological children, but she, she mothered so many throughout that region. And, and as I said, she has left a mark on, on, on most people's, on, on, if not everybody's mind in the, in the community. Those endorsements have adequately confirmed that Mrs. Elmina Clark Allen was an outstanding and worthy representative of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Her funeral was an appropriate celebration of her excellent representation. At her funeral, uh, I was taken aback. Uh, the funeral was done at the church down near the main road, the Roman Catholic Church. And we were going up to the cemetery in Ojo Road. And when we got halfway, the woman stopped the hearse and they took the coffin and they took that coffin all the way to Ojo Road. To the border to the grave. That moved me, I have to say. It was the first time I'd seen it. But the woman in that area felt the Tantimina, as they referred to her, had done so much for them. She had set up groups, given them contracts, got contracts organized for them, not from the government necessarily, eh? uh, to provide meals in the school, to do this, to do that. And they, they became very independent to the horror of some of the males and the executive, but we didn't care about that. And she, she gave them a life. She made them understand that they had a major contribution to making the development of this country. And that funeral service really blew me away. Yeah, it was serious. It was the first time I'd seen women bear a casket, very happily. And they, they did it. And they gave her a proper send-off. It was, it was, it was touching.